This is the reality of working in cybersecurity part two. So if you guys didn't watch the first part of this video, I will link it down in the description below. But I know you guys really like that video and just hearing the, I guess the honest details of working in cybersecurity, obviously everyone's experience is going to be different. And I can only speak from personal experience from things that I may have seen in my early career, as well as from other coworkers who also work in cybersecurity roles. So with that, let's go into it. And for those of you who are new to my channel, I currently work as a security analyst. I'm going on four years of experience after graduating college with my degree in information science and technology. And the first thing I want to discuss is the fact that there are oftentimes no deadlines or no projects when you're working in cybersecurity. So I feel like for typical roles, there's going to be some kind of timeline for what your work looks like, whether it's project-based or continuous iterations if you're in software engineering. For example, you may have weekly or bi-weekly sprints, or maybe you have a project and it's due at the end of the year. But there's definitely going to be some kind of defined timeline of when your projects end and start but for cybersecurity a lot of it is continuous work because a lot of cybersecurity teams typically work on a ticketing queue or a ticketing schedule it's very similar to it or help desk where you definitely may have some kind of long-term or team projects that you work on but a lot of your day-to-day -day work is probably going to be spent on manning a ticketing queue or an inbox and that just keeps going eventually it's kind of like a well-oiled machine but you typically aren't going to know when to expect a ticket to come in there may be busy periods where maybe at the end of the month or something there may be more tickets coming in or maybe your company has a SaaS product and when new features are rolled out to customers then maybe there may be more tickets then it really depends on what kind of alerts and the tickets that you get in your security inbox as well as things like anomalies in logs or alerts from different tools or dashboards that you use across the board but basically what i'm saying is that there isn't always an end to your work it's kind of like a treadmill where you kind of just keep going and going and and sometimes that can be a good and a bad thing because you know kind of what kind of work to expect and you also get better and better at managing the different types of tickets where eventually you'll know what to expect from tickets and be able to know how to deal with them but the downside may be when it gets really busy or it may be the fact that you're where you constantly feel like you're on a wheel and just working on the same things over and over just with different titles or different names but it's essentially doing the same work and that's another reason why i think when working in cybersecurity in a role that has a lot of ticketing and dealing with alerts that that can end up looking the same after a few months or a few years of working in that team or in that role you definitely want to set aside time for some professional development or personal growth and learning just so you're not constantly just heads down on the radar just all the time because continuous learning i think is one of the most important things in cybersecurity and in a role that deals with a lot of alerting and logging and ticketing it can tend to stray you down that path of not really learning new skills or learning new tools because you kind of have everything you need but you find that you probably won't need those extra new cool and fancy skills that people are talking about on cybersecurity news or different trends those probably aren't going to be relevant to your current job but they may be relevant to jobs that you might want to do in the future in cybersecurity or even outside of cybersecurity and i do have a course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity if you guys are interested it's linked in the description below where i share all my tips and tricks on how i got my first job in cybersecurity but the second thing i want to discuss is working with many different stakeholders this is something that i kind of didn't expect in cybersecurity but it really depends on the size of your company and the size of your team so for example in my previous role actually in a rotational program but i was working in a relatively large cybersecurity organization within my company and for the most part i definitely deal with many different teams across the board but in a smaller company or a medium-sized company you definitely see it at a larger scale where a lot of your work is intertwined with different teams whether it's development or product or marketing or legal or sales and all these things kind of come together and teams i never thought would come together to work on anything actually do come together and work on things which is definitely a good thing because you don't want those you know separated silos or groups in your company cross collaboration is definitely a good thing but i do think that is also something to note when going into cybersecurity where you may be expecting especially based on movies and the media where they portray the cybersecurity team or the cybersecurity professional as like a hacker who's just heads down coding or like writing a script or something and they're in a hoodie and they're in a dark room like behind the it department in the back of a closet somewhere and I feel like that is maybe what some people think cybersecurity looks like in the real world. Not to say that I thought I was going to be, you know, coding in a closet in the dark, but I feel like that portrayal of cybersecurity definitely still carries on um, in some people's minds when you go into cybersecurity. And it makes it seem like cybersecurity people just work in the dark and 
don't talk to anybody but that is not the case cybersecurity is integral across the entire organization and you're going to be sharing your reports with the senior leadership team you're going to be talking with legal and sales you're going to be working with the customer support team you're also going to be working hand in hand with it maybe you're managing the pen test for some new product there's just a lot of things that the cybersecurity team is going to be intertwined in doing especially in smaller to medium-sized companies and if you're in a bigger company cybersecurity is going to be especially involved in all the governance compliance and auditing things that are going to be going on so you really can't get away from the cybersecurity team and I think that's a good thing, obviously, because the more cybersecurity awareness that a company has, the better, especially against phishing attacks or hackers or vulnerabilities and just managing risk properly. So these are all good things that are happening, but, but it's definitely important to set expectations for when you go into a cybersecurity team. If you want to be a red teamer, for example, you're not just going to be spending 100% of your time hacking into things. 50% of your time may be spent on reports and on documentation and that final pen test report for your clients, for the development team, so they can resolve the issues. Maybe for the senior leadership team or executives, they may want to know what vulnerabilities were found. So there's definitely a lot more in the metrics and telemetry side compared to what you may have initially thought. And this also brings me pretty well into the next thing, which is auditing and compliance. So while some companies may have like an entire auditing organization or an organization completely dedicated to governance and compliance, depending on the company structure that you're in, of course, but cybersecurity is typically going to be intermingled with those things. Whether you're trying to get an external certification, whether you're trying to pass an external audit, or a customer is asking for some kind of proof or validation from an external source that you're doing what you're saying you're doing in terms of cybersecurity, whether it's encryption or authentication or access management, as well as just internal audit where audits may happen ad hoc. Personally, I have worked in an audit in my previous company and it is a lot of heavy work for months on end in terms of defining what the evidence will look like, creating that evidence, gathering the evidence, submitting that evidence in a very objective and specific way. Auditing compliance and governance let me tell you, it's definitely a very time consuming process um, and it is not easy work. So I do really give kudos to anyone involved in that space. Personally, I've had some experience with it, but I'm definitely not a pro or an SME in this specific topic, in this specific area. And while I don't necessarily think that you have to be as a cybersecurity professional, it's something to keep in mind because at some point in your career as a security professional, you may be asked to collect some kind of evidence, to find some kind of term for evidence that is going to be collected, help provide answers to some kind of external auditing team that wants to ask you certain things about your network infrastructure or your architecture just know that every company no matter what size is eventually going to have some sort of auditing compliance governance process or things or procedures that are going to occur and in the cybersecurity team you may also be in charge of managing those or answering questions for those or providing some sort of input or evidence or just expertise to help move that audit along. And the next thing I want to discuss is hard and soft skills for security. So I probably hinted at this a little bit already in the first two things I mentioned, but I really think that cybersecurity needs a good mix of hard skills and soft skills. So hard skills meaning the tools, the skills that you use, for red teaming or blue teaming or any other work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe it's more technical, maybe it's more procedural, but the soft skills are more so writing the reports, um, speaking to an audience, uh, presenting to senior leadership, gathering metrics and reporting, telemetry, speaking during an audit meeting, um, speaking to external stakeholders, communicating with sales and customers. All these things could be things that you may be working on on a cybersecurity team. And another role I think would be similar is maybe a data scientist role where you also have to do, you know, the actual hands-on work of gathering the data, of wrangling the data, cleaning it, making it mean something to the business, and then also being able to present it and show that it is useful in some way and be able to, I don't know, impact metrics or impact impact revenue in some positive, whatever businesses use data for these days, which is a lot. I feel like these two roles are definitely very hands-on in terms of needing the hard skills to do the job and then needing the soft skills to present what you've done and share with the audience the things that you do and why it's important. Especially going back to the fact that as a pen tester, you're going to spend a lot of time pen testing, but you're also going to spend a lot of time writing the report, writing the breadcrumbs, step one, two, and three, maybe adding screenshots for the things that you did, maybe adding little notes for the dev team to make sure they know what you're talking about to make sure that they're then able to recreate the vulnerability that you found during a pen test. So in general, there's just a lot that goes into cybersecurity, not just the hands-on technical work, but also the soft skills for public speaking and writing well, just overall communication etiquette and skills. Because you could be talking to the customer, you could be talking to the senior leadership team, you could be talking to non-technical people, you could be talking to sales and legal. There's just a lot of different parties that you can talk to that you may be in cahoots with. It sounds really 
okay not to make it sound schemey but that you may be communicating with on a regular basis and the last thing i want to discuss is about making mistakes and errors so i actually made a few videos recently that touched on this a little bit in terms of what i learned as a security analyst and just learning that making mistakes is normal but i also think that in cyber security making mistakes is definitely a lot more dire compared to other potential roles inside and outside of tech for example in software engineering maybe you push some code to production and there's a bug and you roll it back maybe the bug was there for five to ten minutes after you pushed it to production and a handful of users may have been affected of course this depends how big your application is if you're working at a big tech company and you have you know huge volumes of traffic then obviously more people will see the bug and it likely is going to be a p0 or priority zero to fix and while that still is a very serious error i think on the side of cybersecurity, there can definitely be very fatal errors that can be made that can be very disastrous not to say that you're going to get fired if you make a mistake i mean obviously we're all humans everyone's going to make a mistake at one point in their career otherwise you're probably not trying hard enough or not learning but what's important is learning from your mistakes so obviously not making the same mistake twice over and over again that can definitely that can definitely raise some red flags but the hardest part is the fact that a lot of mistakes in our security may be a little bit harder to detect. Maybe you made some firewall changes, for example, and maybe no one noticed that it was a mistake until a few weeks later when they checked the log. Depending on how good your reporting is in your company, maybe it went undetected for a little while compared to a software engineer who pushes out code and it may be a bit more obvious for them for them to be able to see that an error was made or maybe they have a QA team or a testing team that's able to also help them test those things. And this can definitely be hard, especially in your early career when you're just getting started and you're kind of like a ball of nerves when you're touching important things and like if you're touching anything on the production server, I basically the main point I'm saying is to make sure that if you don't know something, ask questions and make sure that you're clear and able to understand why you're doing what you're doing before you pull the switch or press the big red button to do anything serious. You don't have to live in fear of making a mistake 24 seven at your job, but just make sure that you're trying to learn and absorb as much as you can. But yeah, hopefully this video gave you some insight into what you know the reality is of working in cybersecurity and also added some color based on the first video that I made. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you have anything to add to this list feel free to drop it in the comments below i'm sure there are many other things that we could discuss but that won't fit in a 10 minute video but i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye